Hey, my family. So happy that I get a chance to speak with you today. I um, wanted to show you this picture. So this is my two girls several years ago helping out at a uh, display that we had uh, for our business. And I was looking at that picture. It sits on my desk. And I was looking at that picture this morning and I was thinking, um, is there any greater thing, any greater desire uh, in a parent's heart than to see the happiness of their kids? And uh, I, would, I would tend to think that there's a few things that a parent wants more than to see your, your kid uh, smile and growing up and, and becoming uh, the person that God created them to be. And I was, I was thinking about how uh, I've learned in the past that whenever we're growing up, uh, one of the signs of growth is that our intellect can be used over the top of our emotions. So a lot of times, you know, a child uh, can be very emotional from one, you know, from one moment to the next, You're laughing and then crying, um, extremely emotional and, and emotionally driven. And then as we grow, we, under, we begin to use our intellect to understand, oh, okay, so I lost the balloon and it's okay because I have another, you know, dad will get me another balloon. It's not, it's not the end of the world. And um, we all have our own little balloons in our life. When we lose the balloon, we're like, oh, it's the end of the world. And we begin throwing our fits. But as we, as we grow, we start to learn that uh, our emotions um, don't have to uh, rule us and we can use our intellect. And I stayed there for quite a while. I was like, yes, that's that's real growth. And then whenever I started getting into um, Breslov teaching and learning from Rabbi Nachman and from his students, I began to see that a better stage, a next stage, a different stage, whatever you want to call it, of growth is that a muna actually has to precede your intellect. <laughs> so uh, intellect needs to precede emotion, but emuna needs to precede our intellect. And that's a sign of really, really growing up. Whenever we can say, before we react to something, so we have some sort of negative thing that comes at us or perceived negativity, right? And before we react emotionally, um, we can think about it logically, but even before we think about it logically, we can react with Imuna. And this is a really, um, it's difficult to get there, but it's so beneficial when you can do it. Um, you know, I think a lot of people who are, who've really worked on themselves can make this happen. And that is something happens to you and you immediately say, um, thank you, God, for allowing this to happen, this is, or you're saying to yourself, this is what God wants to happen rather than, um, you know, some sort of anger uh, reaction or sadness reaction. You can actually respond with, okay, this is what God wants. Um, and whenever God created the world, you know, he created, if you, if you look at the account in Genesis, there's evening and there's morning, there's darkness before light. And that's how um, God set the world up that we have uh, a bit of darkness before we see a light. And a lot of times we could have like a, a darkness on the outside of us um, and that helps break down inner darknesses so that light can come through outer darknesses, things like you know difficulties that come into, um, into our lives. We have some sort of difficulty. Uh, somebody's lying to you or cheating you or whatever. Those things give you the opportunity to respond to God with humility, right? So um, if somebody was to lie to you or, or cheat you or some something on the outside happens, you can, um, obviously you can respond with emotion, you can respond with anger or whatever. You can respond with your intellect and try to say that that person, you know, might be having a bad day or whatever. Or the first response actually should be that this is what God wants. We need to respond with Imuna. Everything is for our absolute benefit and God is only doing good for us. So a lot of times what happens is like those difficulties 
help to break down our inner darkness, things like arrogance and pride that we have inside. Because um, like it, it shows us that we have to rely on God for everything. Uh, you know, God forbid somebody was sick or you had a bankruptcy or whatever. A lot of times those things are pushing us to seek out God when we're, um, whenever things are going so beautifully or proceed beautifully in our lives. And a lot of times we think that, um, that we did it all and, and we become arrogant. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we give thanks after we eat so that we don't um, begin to think that all of that food came from us and we're nice and satisfied after a meal. We have to remember the creator we have to remember to thank god for what he's done in our lives so submission really is the key whenever things come at us and uh, i realize that i i'm learning these things I'm, I'm really trying to learn and i'm really trying to embed these things into my heart and into my responses and it seems like as soon as i think i've got something like that uh, immediately i'm going to get a test and yesterday, uh, I was sharing that I had, was able to tell our team, hey, everything's for the best and plan B, just like, <laughs> just like Reb Shulkin said, like plan B often is the, that's God's plan and that's the best plan. And so you have to watch, watch that video for sure because it's great. But I was sharing with our work team that plan B was the best and that there was no, no reason to be angry, no reason to be sad, just move forward. And then I got a big test in the afternoon. So I'd shared all this with the team. I felt happy that God had given me that wisdom to be able to share. And I felt like the team was cohesively understanding. And then I get a test. Something happens to me in the afternoon. And I responded immediately with anger. I was very, very upset. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would, I would uh, hopefully begin to realize that it's going to be a test. There's going definitely to be a test. And we have to realize that, um, again, that submission is, is the key uh, because it's so easy to say, no, it should be my way, to respond with the arrogance, to respond with the, with the anger and the pride. So what do we do to try to help that? Um, one of the recommendations is that we say, that we speak out loud this is what God wants. So every time that something happens, um, you know, we, we try to train ourselves, even if we're not feeling it, even if we're not, you know, truly there in that, um, in that moment to express that, we begin to say, this is what God wants. This is what God wants. And eventually that tape that we're, <laughs> that we're, that we're playing over and over and over will become embedded within us. So a lot of us have, uh, you know, we've been listening to the same story that we've told ourselves. I'm just an angry person. I'm just a this, I'm just a that. And we have this um, recording that we keep playing over and over and over in our heads. And we have to stop that tape. We have to stop listening to that CD. And then we have to press record on the new CD and begin to plug in that this is what Hashem wants and um, to, to play that message over and over every time that we have something that comes at us that we perceive, then we begin to actually internalize that. So um, a, intellect often will surpass our emotion, but we have to surpass our intellect with Amuna. Uh, by simply saying that this is what Hashem wants. <laughs> and I hope I can do it. I hope that when I'm faced with difficulties uh, today, that I truly can say that this is what God wants and that I can see the darkness coming uh, before the light and realize that any, anything that I perceive as a darkness on the outside is helping to break down my arrogance and my pride that my inner darkness so that I can see light. May we all uh, have the merit to see an intense light within ourselves today and always. Go and be well, my friends.